Light that spark fire nation, JLD here, and welcome to Entrepreneurs on Fire, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network with great shows like I Digress. Today, we'll be sharing the fastest way to make money investing in real estate. To drop these value bombs, I have brought Zachary Booth into EO Fire Studios. Just a few years ago, Zach was a window cleaner. Although he achieved success with his window cleaning business, he always dreamt of being a real estate investor. Taking a leap of faith, he walked away from window cleaning and within a handful of years was making over a million dollars per year from real estate investing. Zach now has his own company, a successful podcast and YouTube channel where he dedicates his time giving back and helping others get started in the competitive game of real estate and Fire Nation. Today we'll be talking about what Zach would do if he was at square one. What if you have no credit or very little money to start? How do you find deals in such an on-fire market? And so much more when we get back from thanking our sponsors. The My First Million podcast features famous guests, discusses how companies made their first million and brainstorms new business ideas based on the hottest trends and opportunities in the marketplace. One recent ep was all about how venture capitalists make money. Listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts. Zach, say what's up to Fire Nation and share something that you believe about becoming successful that most people disagree with. Thanks for having me. It's awesome to be here. Um, you know, in response to that question, the first thing that comes to my mind is success, um, especially when it comes to uh, financial and personal success with your family or anything else. It's not a destination. Um, if there's not constant improvement, if you're not continually growing and pushing yourself, uh, there's no fulfillment in life. There's no happiness. There's no self-respect or self-love. Um, you know, having a lot of money is really not that important, but it's the progress uh, that's important. So the whole idea of retirement, the whole idea of, um, you know, working to not work ever again, I don't think exists. I don't think that makes anybody happy or fulfills anybody. Um, so retirement's a farce that the corporate world's, you know, indoctrinated or brainwashed all of us to believe is, is actually something that to look forward to, but I don't, I don't believe in that at all. I think you are speaking to the right audience on this topic for sure. And Fire Nation, as I mentioned in the introduction, we're talking about the fastest way to make money investing in real estate. And a lot of our listeners are, are in business and maybe some of them want to try real estate as a side hustle, or maybe they just want to say, hey, let's just give this an absolute go. So if they were at square one and they wanted to get started in real estate investing, what would your recommendation be? What would your strategic advice be? Yeah. So I would suggest what's called real estate wholesaling. There's a lot of content on there. I have a podcast on it and so forth. There's a lot of guys that talk about it. Maybe some of the audience has heard of people like getting into real estate investing with no money down. You know, a lot of these gurus in the past, you know, getting houses for free kind of thing. Have you ever, I'm sure people have heard those things. Um, and, and what they're talking about is real estate wholesaling. So the whole concept around real estate investing in general, and if you're an entrepreneur, you understand um, to be successful in this, you have to start with a deeply discounted property. So it doesn't matter if you want to flip the house. It doesn't matter if you want to buy the house and hold it long term and get cash flow and passive income. You have to start with a super discounted property. So even if you start with a deep, deeply discounted property and you want to flip it or you want to keep it as a rental, you're going to have other barriers. You're going to have to get down payments. You're going to have to get money. You're going to have to have your own cash. You're going to have to have credit. You're going to have to have a lot of things that may be a major barrier to you. Um, and so my story is I was a broke window cleaner and I was trying to get into the world of real estate investing, and those are the barriers I hit. So when I learned about real estate wholesaling, I understood that I could go out and do the marketing, do the hustle, work my butt off, which is something that I was capable of. I didn't have a lot of intelligence, I didn't have a lot of experience, and I didn't have a lot of money, but I had the ability to work hard. And so I found deeply discounted properties, and I passed on that opportunity to a different buy and hold investor for a large assignment fee. So when you, when you go to buy a piece of property, you have a buy and sell agreement between you and the seller, right? And you can have a paragraph in there that says you're allowed to assign that purchase contract to a different end buyer. So I could go to Sally and say, Sally, I'm going to buy your home for a hundred thousand. I can go to Bob the flipper and I say, hey, Bob, 
what would you pay for this house? And he said, I'd pay 150 and you have it under contract with Sally for a hundred. Well, you can just sell that piece of paper for 50 grand, no risk, no debt, none of that. You just get paid an assignment fee. Um, and so I heard about that and I'm like, that's my entry. That's how I can get into real estate investing without having to take a ton of debt and ton of risk when I don't know anything about real estate investing. And, um, so I hired a coach and I went for it. And, uh, the first year, the first eight months, I made a little over a hundred grand the next year, just shy of a half a million the year after that 1.2 million, um, by just selling purchase contracts. And the coolest part of all of that is being able to then cherry pick the best deals that come across your table. You know, I tell my students this all the time, keep the best and sell the rest. Right. And so, um, you know, real estate wholesaling, I just got really long winded there, but the, the best way to get started in my opinion is, is real estate wholesaling. Fire Nation, you have the ability to work hard. Yes, you might not have a ton of money right now. Yes, you may not have a ton of credit at this moment. Maybe you do if you're listening, but maybe you don't. But you do have the ability to work hard. You do have the ability to find opportunities. You do have the ability to bring those opportunities to the right people, and then you can start building a nest egg with what you have. And what do you have? Time and energy. What do most people with money not have? Time. So you're giving them something that they don't have, which is your time, your energy of getting out there, finding the right deals and bringing it to them. Now, I'm going to be honest. I mean, real estate is simply on fire at the time that you and I are talking. I mean, I lived down here in Puerto Rico. Home values have doubled, tripled, quadrupled. It's the same thing in a lot of other highly desirable locations because people are now finding out that they can live remote. So why do I live in this crappy place when I can literally live wherever I want to live and get the job done, still get paid, live remotely, work virtually, all these different things. So the basic question is, is now right here in this moment, a good time to be in real estate? I get this question a lot. It's like, oh, the market's too hot. You know, you can't find deeply discounted properties now. Or when the market crashes, oh, there's too many sellers. Like you can't flip houses, whatever it might be. And I'm going to say this, there is never, ever a bad time to invest in real estate. There's only bad deals, right? So, so many people buy a pro property for way too much and they lose their shorts, right? Or they buy a property and the market dips 10% and they lose their shorts because they weren't planning on, on that, of course, and then they didn't get a good enough deal in the beginning. So one of the big, um, you know, limiting beliefs that people have is since the market's so hot and everyone understands that they can put their market on the MLS and sell it in a day and get, you know, way more than they ever paid for it two years ago, they don't think that people will sell it for a discount. Um, and to be clear, before I got into this, I was a major skeptic of this process. I was very skeptical that you could buy, buy properties 50, 40 cents on the dollar. I was a major, major skeptic myself. And I had something happen that changed my life. So I had a guy named um, uh, Stan, Stan Nielsen. I was washing his windows. You know, I was a window cleaner forever. I was washing his windows. I had learned about wholesaling. I had learned about all this cool stuff, listened to podcasts and YouTube channels. And like I dove into this stuff and uh, I found out he's a real estate developer, very wealthy guy. I'm cleaning this giant mansion and I got talking to him at the end of like an hour and a half conversation of hearing a story. I said, man, if I could just get two rentals this year, that would be incredible. And this was back in 2016. And he said, oh, that's very convenient. I got these two properties. I don't want to deal with them. I haven't collected rents in four months. I got these, you know, I got a couple multi-million dollar developments that I'm dealing with and that's all I want to work. I'm not, I'm not worried about these rentals. So if you'll take them, take them, I'll sell them to you for an awesome discount. He did. I made well over a hundred thousand dollars buying them and reselling them to the tenants. And, and I was like, holy crap, it's possible, right? You can make an absolute fortune. And so what you're looking for, everyone, the way you find deeply discounted properties, especially in a hot market like now, is you're trying to find people that want a pawn shop for their house, right? People go to a pawn shop for the convenience factor. They know they could get more if they sold it on eBay or Craigslist and went through the hassles or Facebook marketplace or whatever else, right? There are people that understand they can get more money for their house if they list it with an agent. Your goal is to find people that are not down out on, on their luck. You're not taking advantage of people. You're very clear. You could make more money, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller, if you just fix it up and listed it. I can buy it now. Like, what are you wanting to do? So the people that will trade convenience for price 
are usually wealthy real estate uh, investors that are done with their properties. They're tired landlords. They don't want to deal with them anymore, right? They're people that inherited mom's house and she was a hoarder and it's a mess and they, their sibling situation's a mess and they just want to be done. There's people that, um, you know, went through a divorce, people that, um, you know, have, have a really bad house or just don't like working with real estate agents. They just don't care. They want to be done quickly. You know, um, so I, I got long winded again, but you know, the whole concept behind this is finding people that want speed and convenience over price, finding people that want a pawn shop for a house. Cause if you can do that, it doesn't matter what the market's doing. If you're buying properties at 40, 50 cents on the dollar and the market crashes 10%, doesn't matter. You, no, you're, you're going to be just fine. The problem is people get too hungry and too greedy and spend too much money. Fire Nation, so much gold here. And I think it's really good to go back to where we started here, which is there's really never a bad time to be in real estate. There are only bad deals. So think about that. No matter what the timing is, hey, it's all about, is it a great deal? Is it a good deal? Is it an okay deal? Or is it a bad deal? Like you need to be evaluating at all times. And we have some really important things for you to know, Fire Nation. When we get back, from thinking our sponsors. The new year is here, and my guess is that you have big goals set for you and your sales team over the coming months. From new projects to bringing in more leads, a new year can often feel like a totally new start, but let's not forget the most important part, arming your team with the best tools so they can focus on giving your customers the best experience possible. And this starts with getting ahead of the learning curve so that new challenges turn into new ways to grow. With new features dedicated to helping your sales team improve your customer experience, HubSpot is on a mission to help millions of companies grow better Better, starting with yours. Conversion intelligence tools helps your teams get real-time insight into calls with automatic recording transcription and call analysis. With more visibility into customer conversions, coaching and customer feedback becomes that much easier. Plus, easy share meeting links let customers see availability and allow them to book meetings with you, all from the HubSpot platform, which cuts out the endless cycle of scheduling emails. Learn more about how you can transform your customer experience with a HubSpot CRM platform at HubSpot.com. Com. Zach, we are back and you were able to get your start because you had the right coach. Talk about the importance of finding the right mentor. Oh man, it's everything. So yes, I coach. And what I'm about to say, some people might say, oh, you're just saying this because you're trying to recruit people to your program. And I'm going to say this, if you think that's why I'm sharing this, go find a different coach. Do not even look into my coaching program, right? Tom Kroll was my coach. He completely changed my life, right? He's, he took me from a broke window cleaner to making over a million a year. Like I will always be forever grateful for this man. Um, he doesn't coach anymore. He sold out of his coaching business or I'd say, go, go hire him. Right. (laughs) But, um, there's, there's three things that I suggest when, when looking for a mentor, like if you want to get into anything, any industry, any, you know, any goal that you have, it's so important to have a coach. And, and these are the filters that I go through. I'm, I'm always hiring coaches, always having help to help me accomplish my goals in my businesses and in my personal life. So these are the three things I look for. First, I look at the person, um, have they done, are they currently doing exactly what I want to accomplish? Right. We always want to take advice from people that are done and doing what we're wanting to do, right? Because they have a perspective that others don't. So that's the first filter. The second filter is, have they been able to and have they consistently found the success for others that you're looking for, right? Are they currently coaching? Because doing something yourself is a whole lot different than teaching someone else how to do it. You have to have the heart for it. It's, It's a whole different person right, that can teach and mentor and serve others at that high capacity. The last thing that I look at is, do I trust that person? Would I sit down and have a cup of coffee? Would I, do I like that person? Do I, do I really feel like he's there for his students or is it for his ego, right? Do, like, do I connect with that person? So that's the filter that I look at when I go to hire a coach. Fire Nation, it is critical to realize that you do not need to recreate the wheel. Almost every single person who I have talked to over the years who has found success has found the right mentor. All the way back to me in 2012 when I found my podcast coach, somebody who was where I wanted to be in about a year's time, and that was so critical. 
So Zach, we talked about a lot of awesome stuff. I really want you to take this home for us with a bang. So share with us the key takeaway that you really want to make sure Fire Nation gets from our entire conversation today. Share how we can connect with you, learn more about your coaching program for those that are interested, and then we'll say goodbye. It's a long story, but I became a coach and it was not on purpose. I never had an intention to. Um, I did a self-help journal that was all about helping others. And, um, you know, if you want to, uh, if you want to receive, you have to first give what you want. So I had a goal of making a million dollars, um, back in 2018. And, um, the self-help journal said I had to give away whatever I want to receive. If I wanted love, I gave love. If I want money, I give money. So I had to give away a million dollars that year. So I brought on 10 students and started teaching them, um, what I had learned to make a half a million the year before. Um, and the more I taught, the more I learned and the better I got at my, at my business and the more mistakes I found and holes I found in my business. You know, my, my coaches or my students started having massive success. You know, my very first student I brought on, Michael McLeish, he's actually now made over a million dollars from my program. And, um, he texted me about a month and a half ago. Um, super awesome. Anyways, um, As I became a coach, I started finding people that were just like me. They were very skeptical, like they didn't understand how it was possible to make the kind of money. Um, They were very skeptical of coaches and mentors in the space like I was, and they didn't believe that you could make 50, 60, $100,000 by finding a deeply discounted property. And if you could, you couldn't do it with integrity. And And so I was up late one night, like, how do I show people what I learned? How do I show people that this is a wholesome business, that you're helping and serving these sellers and also getting paid a lot of money? And I was up late. I could not sleep because I was like, I have to solve this problem. And I came up with the idea that, well, what changed my mind? What changed my perspective? And I shared the story of Stan, that I washed his windows. He was a wealthy guy. And he gave me these deeply discounted properties. I made over a hundred grand. I was like, that changed everything for me, right? Seeing it happen changed it for me. And I wanted to give the same gift to some, to my students and to, to anyone that wanted to find financial success through real estate investing. And so I was like, okay, well I have to give people an over the shoulder. Look, I have to go find a Stan Nielsen. I have to find a wealthy guy and he understands he's selling him at a discount and show people what I do day to day in my wholesaling business so they believe that they can do it and they can see Zach's no one special. Zach's this kind of goofy goober, you know, outdoorsman that, you know, washed windows for a decade. Like Zach's no one special. If he can do it, I can do it. And so I was like, okay, well, let's do this. I took a thousand bucks. I flew to Tampa, Florida. I never been there. And I picked Tampa literally because it was warm and I was going in January. And uh, plus there's plane tickets to, to um, Brazil where my wife's from. And so she could go see her family wise there. So I fly to Tampa with a thousand bucks. And the goal was to make over 40 grand in 40 days doing real estate wholesaling and document day by day and have a film crew and share that content for free with others. And, um, so I want you guys to understand how possible it is, how much work it is. It's not easy how much work it is, but how much financial success, um, can come from understanding this process and how, uh, real estate investing in general can change your life and more specifically real estate wholesaling and getting started in real estate investing. So I have that day by day challenge. I blew the goal completely out of the water. I was so grateful and I prayed before I went. I said, God, please allow me to find a Stan Nielsen. Please allow me to document an experience that can change lives. And day four, I called the wrong number, got a hold of this guy, got three purchase contracts on day four. If you're going to watch one day, at least watch day four. Um, But it's life changing. And a ton of people that have been able to see the content um, have been inspired and taken action and made a ton of money just from the free content. And so, you know, the big giveaway, the big takeaway that I hope people get is they get to go watch this challenge and see exactly what it takes. And and hopefully some of these people will take action on what they learn and what they see and, um, and have a ton of success from it. Fire Nation, a lot of takeaways from today. I hope that you do take action when you listen to something, when you hear something, if it strikes a chord, follow through. That's all you need to be making sure that you do in life is follow through. Zach, where does Fire Nation need to go to consume all this great content and to check out this opportunity? 
Yeah, so if you go to DFD, stands for Driving for Dollars, dfdmastery.com forward slash fire, um, you guys can get full access to that day-by-day documentary. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and you've been hanging out with ZB and JLD today, so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com, type Zach in the search bar, and the show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about here today, best show notes in the biz. D-F-D, that is D-F-D, driving for dollars, mastery.com slash fire. Check that out. And Fire Nation, thank you for being here. And Zach, thank you for sharing your truth, your knowledge, your value with our listeners here today. For that, we salute you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hey, Fire Nation. Today's value bomb content was brought to you by Zach and Fire Nation. Over the past decade, I've interviewed more than 3,000 of the world's most successful entrepreneurs and created a revolutionary 17-step roadmap to your financial freedom and fulfillment. I put it all into my first traditionally published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, personally endorsed by Seth Godin and Gary Vaynerchuk. The Common Path to Uncommon Success is the step-by-step guidance that you need to achieve the lifestyle of your dreams Visit UncommonSuccessBook.com to order your copy today. And I'll catch you there or I'll catch you on the flip side. The My First Million podcast features famous guests, discusses how companies made their first million and brainstorms new business ideas based on the hottest trends and opportunities in the marketplace. One recent ep was all about how venture capitalists make money. Listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts.